for five years, Robert Karpinski was abused by a priest when he was a teen. Now, at the time, he hid this story from everyone, even his parents. But here's the twist. He later became a priest himself. Now, a warning, his story may be triggering for some viewers. My story begins in the city of Philadelphia. I grew up as one of six children in a very Catholic family. Our life revolved around baptisms and first communions and confirmations. I remember processing with my classmates into church for graduation practice, and we were chatting about the fact there was a new priest unpacking his car. This priest had a home in upstate Pennsylvania, and he wanted some help working the, they called it the farm. And I re remember going and feeling really special that this new priest took a liking to me. That summer is when the abuse started because he was asking my parents more often for me to come help him at the farm. I think at that time, I felt utter shame because of what was happening and my own role and place within it. It speaks to the way the Catholic Church weaves itself into the life of one of its members. The web was so tight that I went to become a priest. When I think the average person reading my story would say, okay, I don't understand the abuse, but I really don't understand why you became a priest. It points to the beauty that I thought the church represented. Wow, what a story, Robert. Thank you for joining us and being so transparent and courageous and sharing your story. Now, you became a priest after being abused by, by one. How do you explain that to people? Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. And you know, that, that question is a very difficult one to answer. Um, it's a question people often ask when they talk to me. Um, and the way I can explain it is by taking people back to a time when I was a high school student, I was very impressionable living within a very Catholic family. And I really was, I had separated out what was happening to me um, in the abuse from the life of the church itself. So I knew good priests at the high school I went to. I knew the faith of my parents and my grandparents. And that part of my life was beautiful. And I separated it out from what was happening to me personally that I never talked about, I never acknowledged. I compartmentalized that off to the side. Um, when I entered the seminary at 18, I was impressionable, idealistic, um, and, and was probably living out the faith experience of my family and my, myself growing up in what I call Catholic Philadelphia. You know, Robert, I, I appreciate what you're saying because I think a lot of victims of abuse can understand that separation um, and, and apply it to their own lives. But while a priest, you, uh, you told church leaders about the abuse. So what was their reaction and what happened to your abuser? Yeah, I, I knew when, you know, m many of your viewers probably know the movie Spotlight that came out in 2015. The, the, the impetus for that story is what impacted me back in 2002. When I was a Catholic priest, I was uh, working in a high school in the Diocese of Bridgeport. And I realized that I needed to say something as a priest to the Archdiocese to remove this man from ministry, to, to eliminate him from any involvement with children. And what I was given, what I call, I was given lip service. And I remember thinking, I'm coming back to you as a brother priest to say this, wanting nothing more than him to be removed from ministry. And you're dancing around it. You're never acknowledging to me that you believe that what happened to me actually did happen to me. Um, and it wasn't until I came forward and met with the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office that I'd learned in the documents from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia that they knew I was abused, that they knew this priest was a serial abuser. So I, I was ignored. Um, he was removed from ministry after the scandal in Boston broke and is living on his own, never been prosecuted or brought to any form of justice for what he did to me and other children. 
Well, you know, that, that brings me to my next question for you. You tried to bring that priest to justice, so can you tell us why did those efforts fail? Yeah, those efforts, those efforts failed for many reasons. One, they failed because in Pennsylvania, the statute of limitations is a very narrow window. And without the Archdiocese of Philadelphia acknowledging to me years ago, before 2002, that they believed me, there was nothing I could do. So when I came forward as a priest in 2002, before the grand jury in Philadelphia, the statute of limitations had already expired. There, there was nothing legally that they could do um, to this priest because of that statute expiring. So, you know, I, I feel on one hand, by them, not by the archdiocese, not acknowledging it for so many years, it let the statute of limitations clock run out. And when they did acknowledge that, yes, indeed, we believe you, Rob Karpinski, and we believe other victims, it was too late. Um, because there was nothing that could be done based on the statute of limitations in Pennsylvania. And then even beyond that, the Catholic dioceses in Pennsylvania have worked and spent millions lobbying state legislators to not lift that statute, wow. to let victims like me come forward. So they spent millions of dollars to prevent that statute right. from being lifted. That's, and um, so oh, it's a multifaceted answer, I'm, but there's a lot of reasons why I think he was never brought to justice. I, it's infuriating, but you know, you sharing your story and getting the message out and just you living your truth now as a priest, I mean, I, I, I hope that gives you a little bit of justice. Um, if, if anyone out there wants to learn more um, of his story, and if you or anyone you know is dealing with abuse first, I want to put this out there, please go to that website, go ahead and call rain.org. Uh, and we really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you so much. Um, I wish You're we welcome. had more time with you. I really do. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks.